In this series, I'm going to show you how to build your very own automated trading bot using MetaTrader. All right, here's what you're going to need to complete this episode. To start off with, I really recommend that you've completed the Setup 101 episode, came right before this one. That's really important because it shows you how to import the settings that you need for your terminal application for MetaTrader really safely and securely. If you haven't done it, that's fine. Just make sure that you know what settings you need and how to import them. The next thing that you're going to need is the Python package installer, which is called PIP. Now, if you've downloaded your Python from the Microsoft Store uh, 3.10, then that'll be fine. That will have installed it for you. Or if you're a little bit more advanced and you're using a virtual environment, that should be sorted as well. If you've done neither of those things, make sure that PIP is installed on your system because that's what we're going to need to import the library that we're going to be using. Finally, you really need the MetaTrader 5 terminal and a trading account to use. Highly recommend that you use a practice account for this one uh, so you don't lose any money. To interact with our MetaTrader 5 terminal application, we'll be using the official MetaTrader 5 Python library. This is how you install it with pip. All right, let's get coding. To get started, create a file called mt5lib. Now, this file is effectively going to become a pseudo library, which we're going to be using for the rest of the series whenever we want to interact with MetaTrader 5. It's pretty cool. In that file, import the MetaTrader 5 library that we imported using pip or downloaded and installed using pip in the previous section. Now, here's a little bit of a weird thing about MetaTrader 5 that really caught me out when I first got started. When you're interacting with MetaTrader 5 through the Python API, you have to initialize MetaTrader 5 and then log into it. Now, I think that might be because they're kind of just going with the old school workflow of, you know, you go down to your start menu and start it, and then you log into it. I mean, I don't really know why they've kept that workflow in there because you use the same details for both. But, you know, without getting into it too much, this is what we're going to do in this function. We're going to initialize it, and then we're going to log into it. So let's get going. The function is going to be called start underscore MT5, and we're just going to pass it our project settings variable. As with all of our functions, and just as a, a good way of doing programming, we're going to comment our code and give us a, ourselves a little bit of a reminder for the future about what this function is and what it does. We're going to define our parameters, and then we're going to get into it. Okay, now what I do when I've uh, been using this function a lot in my own code is I always make sure that I uh, define the variables a little bit cl more clearly. Now, classic example of that is the username variable. Typically in a JSON file, that's probably going to be stored as a string, particularly if you're using some sort of like API method. Uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your perspective, uh, MetaTrader 5 actually requires that variable to be passed to it as an integer. Now, in Python, it's really, really simple to be able to convert from an integer into a string. And so what I basically do at the start of the function is do exactly that. It saves me a whole ton of problem and errors down the line. Okay, you can see there, if you did the setup 101, you'll see all of the different variables that you need for your MetaTrader uh, all getting brought in. Top tip here, you can see how it's been done securely. At no point do those variables turn up in my code. It's a really safe and secure way of doing things. All right, now for this code, what I'm going to be using is what's called a try and accept statement. And this is really a, a way of handling errors that might get thrown in our code. It makes your code far more robust, and you'll see how we use it in future episodes to make sure that your code doesn't break 
halfway through a trade, which is you know, bad thing if that does happen. Effectively, all we're going to do is we try to do something. If it doesn't work, we throw an exception and we print that exception to the string uh, to the screen rather. Now, in more advanced episodes, which I'll do in the future, not part of this series, I'll actually show you how to use those errors in order to be able to really help your program be more reliable. Uh, but we won't be covering that in this series. For now, all we're going to do is try to do something. If it doesn't work, we print the, to the user what the problem has been, uh, and then we just basically throw out a false. If it's false, you know, we haven't logged in and we haven't initialized MetaTrader 5, we move on. So I do that for both the MT5 init, and as you'll see in a moment, I also do that for the MT5 login. Okay, you can see there when I print the error to the screen, I make sure to be very, very clear that the error is with the initialization component of what we're doing. That's gonna be quite helpful because you know, in a couple of months time, when you're using this library for some super amazing algorithm that you've uh, developed, you're really gonna to wanna to know what the issue is. Maybe it's something simple, you just change the location of your terminal 64.exe or chose a different broker who you know names it slightly differently. So really, really, Good idea just to make sure that those uh, error messages that you're throwing up are really, really simple and straightforward. Okay, now you can see where I'm doing my initial, uh, my um, login function. And the first thing I do is check if it's been initialized. If it hasn't been initialized, no real point attempting the login. So it'll just, you know, bypass this whole next section of code and go straight to false. But it's a double check. All right, once again, you can see how I've really, really clearly printed to the screen what the issue was. In this case, if the try and accept statement doesn't work, the issue is going to be with logging into the terminal, not with the initialization. It'll be the login. Now, weirdly enough, again, going back to my point about how it's a little bit odd, I've never had a scenario where an initialization succeeds and a login fails because they're kind of using the same variables in our setup. But, you know, just in case it ever does happen, I've included an error for it. And to finish off the function, we then go into our, you know, if it all works, return true, otherwise default to returning false. So the only way that the user can get a true statement is if both succeed. Straight after this, we'll be heading back to main.py. Alrighty, so we're heading back to main.py to run our library. To do this, Go to the very top of your file and import the mt5 underscore lib file that you just created. It's got our functions in it. Once you've done this, go back down into your main function, which is the double underscore main double underscore, and let's see if our MetaTrader 5 will start up. So we create a variable to store the outcome. And then we're using our mt 5 lib dot and call the method that we just created, the function we just created, pass it our project settings, and we're going to hit play. Now, just a quick one. If you haven't got the MetaTrader 5 Terminal 64 app open on your uh, endpoint, you'll actually find that it'll take a couple of seconds and it'll pop open for you. How good is that? All right, let's finish this off. What we've done so far is we've 
started our MT5 terminal and confirmed our login details, but we've placed in a slide of the main function. That can get a little bit complex and a little bit complicated, particularly as we start to have more and more things that are required to do at startup. So to simplify it and make our code what's called dry, which means don't repeat yourself, we're actually gonna pull that functionality out and put it in its own function, which we're gonna call start underscore up. Once again, we're just gonna pass the variable project settings straight into it, and we're gonna go from there. As with all of our functions, we'll start by specifying what it is and leaving ourselves some comments to understand what we did. We'll actually return to this function in a future uh, episode of this series uh, in order to add some more functionality such as initializing symbols, which I'll tell you all about that in the next episode. Okay, filling out this function for this particular episode is really straightforward. We're just going to repeat the same functionality that we put in main, but with a couple of little extra added bits just to really give us a little bit of an indication of what's going on. So we start by using our library that we created to do the startup procedure, and that'll return true or false. If it returns true, we're actually just going to print a little message to the screen that tells our user, hey, startup for MetaTrader 5 was completely successful. It can be really handy when you're starting things up. You can add fun little messages uh, if you want to. Okay, and then if it doesn't work, our default is going to be to return false. Now, for more advanced programmers out there and something I cover in a future series, uh, this is a great place to add a custom error. So you could add an error that says MetaTrader 5 had some issues starting up. So really going to help you uh, in the future. Now we're quickly going to import that brand new function that we've just created in our main.py. Okay, I'm going to print the outcome to the screen. And let's see what happens. You can see there on my screen, I forgot to pull up the, the application, the, the run window. So I'll just run it again, just so you can see. Look at that, MetaTrader 5 startup successful. 